Now we have with us philosopher, psychologist, and educator Zach Stein to speak on the post-tragic blues sensibility. Mr. Stein, welcome, and please take it away. Hey, thank you very much. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, you know, if Greg spoke about how there's a relationship between democracy uh, and jazz, I think there's a relationship between democracy and the blues as well. And I'm going to weave that together by speaking about this notion of uh, what I call post-tragic consciousness. Uh, and the basic idea here is that, uh, you know, democracy isn't about winning. Democracy is actually about losing, how you handle loss. And this wonderful book by Danielle Allen, uh, Talking to Strangers, where she articulates that. She says, we have this misunderstanding that democracy is about forming a consensus and getting everyone to believe the same thing, when in fact it's about handling uh, opposition and creating a situation of uh, cooperative opposition. Uh, and what that means is that we need to be able to lose well, and we need to be able to understand that life actually is woven through with loss. Um, democracy, unlike other forms of government that strive for a certain kind of perfection, democracy uh, as it comes from Athens and the Greeks in some ways, although you could trace it to other roots, uh, democracy is about uh, a certain inherent open loop in the human condition, a certain tragic structure. So as a psychologist, I think about how we transform from little babies in a crib to becoming children, to becoming adolescents, to adults, to old age. Uh, and there's many ways to think about that. One way to think about it is in terms of the stations that the personality might go through. Um, and so I talk often about the pre-tragic personality. And the pre-tragic personality believes we can get everyone to agree. <laughs> right? The pre-tragic personality is a kind of a tragic hero, uh, excuse me, a kind of co comedic hero, where you get the girl at the end and everything works out. <laughs> this is the pre-tragic consciousness. And then there's a tragic consciousness when uh, the illusions of childhood are stripped away uh, and you realize that there's an inherent tragic structure to existence itself, um, that the very country we live in, the laws that we abide by were written in blood and et cetera. And so you can get trapped in tragic consciousness and not escape from tragic consciousness. But what the blues musicians teach us, <laughs> and we can sit as apprentices at the foot of blues musicians on this point, uh, is that there's a way out of the tragic to the post-tragic. Uh, and Albert Murray in his book, The Hero and the Blues, I'll hold up a book here too. Uh, Albert Murray in his book, The Hero and the Blues, lays out very articulately the nature of that post-tragic consciousness. Um, it is not one that resolves tragedy, right? The way out of tragedy is not to make it so there isn't tragedy. <laughs> it's to learn how to live with tragedy. Um, he uses the metaphor of the... Uh, the creation of a sword, right? The fire, the fire that makes the metal malleable does not destroy it. It eventually hardens its battle edge. Uh, so we learn to be again in cooperative opposition to the circumstances. The tragic hero, classically in tragedy, and this is what Albert Murray dis dis discusses in this book, um, Hemingway and <clears throat> the Greeks, and then of course also through to Robert, uh, excuse me, Thomas Mann, uh, what, you, what you find in the tragic hero is not a resolution of tragedy, in fact, but a living with tragedy, a transcending tragedy from within. Uh, and so the invitation, essentially, uh, to democracy at this moment is to not fall into the trap of demanding consensus and conformity in a time of great complexity but rather to learn to live in cooperative opposition and to uh, work with a form of post-tragic consciousness that accepts loss as an inherent part of the human condition, that accepts illness, sickness, death as an inherent part of the human condition. These are things that the psyche inevitably deals with as it matures. Uh, people without means, people on the short end of the stick, uh, people like the blues musicians, um, understood this well. And so that's how we can learn <laughs> from the blues idioms uh, and from blues uh, 
as an emergent property of American culture, as an emergent property of American democracy. We can learn from it to help uh, save democracy in a time of crisis, uh, in a time when we're regressing back to pre-tragic forms of perfection. We're getting stuck in a kind of postmodern tragic overwhelm and re-traumatization. Uh, so the transcendence through tragedy is what we're seeking uh, and the establishment of a cooperative opposition. Uh, and so that's this notion of the post-tragic consciousness as a way to learn from the blues and as a way to reconfigure the notion of democracy, not about winning, but democracy about losing. And similarly with life, that we live towards dying instead of pretending to perfect our lives here. So I'll end on that note. Uh, I hadn't been keeping track of the time, but it's a pleasure to speak with you. I appreciate the time uh, and attention of everyone. Thank you very much for that. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Zach, for your time and your thoughts. We really appreciate it.